Morning, this is Dr. Rutledge from sunny Baja, California. I'm here with our team in uh, Tijuana, and um, we're uh, happy to talk to you this morning about uh, what <laughs> I read this morning, which I think is kind of breaking news related to oatmeal. <laughs> so um, we'll go ahead and get started and then uh, finish up uh, towards the end here to discuss why we're talking about oatmeal this morning. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And I'll go away to come back later. Good, you are what you eat. Short chain fatty acids from fiber are good for you. And um, so this is related to one of my uh, somewhat uh, uh, unusual recommendations to eat oatmeal. And uh, I frequently had uh, patients that I talked to and they'll be grumpy about it. They said, I don't like oatmeal. And I say, uh, okay, of course, you, you should do whatever you want. But uh, many people who call me are um, really devastated by their illnesses, uh, including obesity, but uh, often other illnesses that go along with obesity. So um, when I uh, tell them to eat oatmeal, to me, that seems like a small price to pay for someone who is suffering so severely. But um, I was reading through the latest research articles and I found one this morning that I thought I would pass on to you through this short video. And um, I'll also tell a little story. I spoke to about three patients yesterday. One is a woman from uh, Pakistan who's gonna have surgery with a friend of mine, Dr. Atif in uh, Islamabad, who I was fortunate to be able to visit with and work with. And I would tell you that uh, as far as I can say, the Dr. Atif is a superb surgeon and offers a great original version of the MGB um, with good outcomes. And uh, so she's ready for surgery and she had a bunch of questions and I talked to her for a little over an hour and I looked at my watch and I saw it was around 3 p.m. here in uh, the California uh, Tijuana time zone. And I said, isn't it around 3 a.m. in your country? Because <laughs> you're on the other side of the earth, I know from being there. She said, yes, but it was so wonderful talking to you. So we had a good time. But then I had another phone call from a former patient of mine. She's about 13, 14 years since her surgery with me in uh, Nevada. And uh, she's a nurse practitioner and uh, had done well with going down to a weight of 130 pounds for more than 10 years. And then um, some things happened in, in her life, uh, including the pandemic. And uh, she's gained her weight back to around 180. And she was talking to me a couple of months ago about possibly having a revision. And I said, sure, we are happy to do revisions. We don't think frequently, we don't have to do them. And we're not like the, some of the other operations which are fairly high in their failure rates. So uh, I said, you know, maybe you'd wanna try the diet and including the oatmeal. And she called me yesterday. Now, a few months later, she said, ah, I couldn't do that. And I said, okay, we'll be happy to operate. But uh, Another little pitch for trying the oatmeal and some of the other small changes. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that this morning. So again, um, you are what you eat and uh, short chain fatty acids, which come from fiber are good for you. And so just a brief introduction again, that when you eat fiber, we can't digest the fiber. That's the, when you eat oatmeal, for example, and not when you eat eggs, bacon, meat, dairy, there's no fiber in those foods. The fiber is in plants, but particularly high in unprocessed uh, steel cut oats, for example, my favorite. And so when you eat that food, it goes down into the gut and that I'm summarizing, but basically it gets digested by bacteria, only the good bacteria and the good bacteria digest it and they release chemicals like butyrate, propionate and acetate, which are small molecules and they're called short chain fatty acids and they are really good and this morning we'll show you they're actually so good for you, they may actually make you think better. So here's the study, a fiber deprived diet in animals caused cognitive impairment. So they took animals, mice, they fed them without much fiber in their food. And their title is a fiber derived diet causes cognitive impairment, that is brain damage with hippocampal microglial mediated synaptic loss. How about that? I pronounced it correctly, I think. 
hippocampal part of the brain, microglial, tiny cells that are important in the brain, mediated synaptic or brain nerve losses through changes in the gut microbiome. The bacteria in the gut changed and those chemicals, the short chain fatty acids, which come out of the gut bacteria eating the fiber caused brain damage. Okay, <clears throat> stick with me for a second now. <laughs> I know some of you are turning it off already. <laughs> Let me move this a little. Good. Okay, so cognitive impairment is an increasing problem. So what, that, what they're saying there is that Alzheimer's disease and dementia are skyrocketing as complications. And a core feature of the aging brain is these variations on Alzheimer's or neurodegenerative diseases, brain damage, okay? And maybe not related, but industrialized nations have a marked decrease in the amount of dietary fiber in our diet. We eat a lot less fiber. That we think is related to a change in the number and kind of bacteria that live inside us. And so is there a link? It seems silly, that's ridiculous. I mean, would oatmeal make a difference in your brain function? That was their question. In other words, is there a potential link between eating a low fiber diet that is not listening to me <laughs> and not eating your oatmeal? What would it do to the brains of the uh, experimental animals? And basically the fiber deficiency. So the model is they fed the animals the usual kind of food, but just with much less fiber in it, okay? The fiber depleted mice, the fiber deficient mice showed impaired cognition. They couldn't do tasks. So they couldn't remember things. They couldn't uh, perform the daily tasks of living. <laughs> so you might wonder what a mouse has to do every day while they have homework and no. So they changed their brain. And then they looked at the brain and basically the hippocampus, which is an important part of memory, showed that it was damaged. And there was also inflammation, okay? Now they also showed this gut bacteria dysbiosis, means the gut bacteria was bad, was damaged, it changed with decrease in particularly two kinds or one kind of bacteroides bacteria and increased in the proteobacteria. And so this microbiota change occurred prior to the brain injury. That is first change in gut bacteria, second brain injury. And so the compromised intestinal barrier was also noted. So when they looked at the lining of the gut, that changed. And that's very well studied in many other studies. And what they found was, of course, without the fiber, then there's less of the short chain fatty acids. They are not eating their oatmeal for breakfast. So <clears throat> low fiber diet leads to cognitive impairment. So I'm going to say that three times. <laughs> Don't eat your oatmeal brain damage. <laughs> All right, calm down. This is, this is in lighthearted. Don't go to your attorney and say, Dr. Rutledge told me that I want to sue him. <laughs> this is for entertainment purposes only, but I think fiber is good for you. All right. And eating, how dangerous is oatmeal? You know, this can see me in the, <laughs> in the, <laughs> in the court and they'll say, your honor, Dr. Rutledge said to eat oatmeal and my, my client uh, got brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> so look, all we're saying is a healthy diet is probably good for you. And here's an example where potentially the low fiber diet alters the gut bacteria. We've known that for a long time. There's a lot of other research data I'll be publishing soon, but basically if you eat a poor diet, you get changes in the gut bacteria. And we know some good bacteria is different than some bad bacteria. In this case, they showed it actually affected the brain. The adverse impact of dietary low fiber on brain function highlights that an increase in fiber intake as a nutritional strategy might reduce the risk of developing diet associated cognitive decline and neurodegenerative disease. And, and what's the risk? You eat oatmeal. <laughs> so um, that's my brief little intro for this morning. Please stay in touch with me and uh, be happy to talk with you about uh, our surgical practice down here in Tijuana. Dr. Elon and his team, uh, Bill and Stacy, are available along with Henry for scheduling. So contact us anytime and have a good morning. <laughs>